Okay, welcome to the part two of the Tracker Knife Game Master tutorial series, where we're going to be concentrating on modeling the handle and the screws and the metallic rope holes at the back. So, starting off with the topology for the uh, back of the knife blade after these little indentations are finished, and we're going to select by angle the side of the, the, the knife blade and constrain that to the z axis, flatten it in the z axis. So we've got a perfectly flat knife blade uh, that looks good. Now I'm just uh, altering it now because when I flattened it, it moved it in a little bit because it balance, it uh, averages out all the vertices that I have selected and then flattens them. So it's moved in a little bit. So I've moved that out to, to keep the proportions of the, the knife and stop there being a strange edge on the inside. So now I'm selecting the back of the handle and I the back of the knife blade, I should say, and I'm extra extruding, extracting that using the patch uh, as the clone, and I'm just uh, moving that out, but keeping the symmetry. So now we don't have to worry about matching a new handle model up to the, those indentations at the top. We can just use the topology that's existing from the last knife, and just drag it out, and I'm adjusting the shape to match the handle. Now making sure all the topology is balanced uh, and it flow flows well. And I'm also making sure I've got a vertice at each uh, screw hole because I'm going to be using uh, loop regularize to uh, make a loop ins around that uh, because then I'll in inset that, uh, extrude it inwards and uh, make the hole for that nut to go in, that screw to go in. I'm working in see-through mode here so I can just see through to the reference image and make sure that all of the uh, polys are matching up to where I want them to be. Um, I've got in the back of my mind, I've got a topology that I want to follow. That it's, it's sort of in the back of my head, but I'm trying to make sure that as, as I go, I'm making room for how the topology is going to be. So I'm making sure, I've, like I say, I've got a vert at each of these uh, screw centers and on the rope metallic rope holder at the back. And also, I'm making sure that I've got enough room around the screws because I like to have a, another loop. Uh, I, I don't just like to extrude inwards, I like to have another loop which protects the smoothing, ha the edge of the smoothing. So if you don't put a, a loop around the edges of where you've extruded inwards and you just go straight from, uh, for example, if you've got a, a grid and you just get, extrude one grid segment down and then run edge loops along the side to straighten it off, if you do that, and then you look at your model from the left view, you'll see that uh, too much of the surface curves inwards. And if you put a loop around it, it basically protects that and makes sure you've got a flat surface and then your curvature goes inwards and you don't get that sort of overspill of smoothing. Now I'm just reworking the edge of this uh, because the, the edge of the knife blade is very, uh, the edge of the handle is very soft. So I'm, I'm softening that off and I'm dealing with the areas that it's giving me because I'm going to rework the topology in those sections anyway. So I, I, just on the second monitor now, checking lots and lots of reference to see exactly how smooth that edge should be. Because once you've committed to this, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, rework it. So going in there with a the chamfer now. And again, I'm just reworking the topology a little bit because uh, I've worked out that I'm not going to get as uh, refined result if I don't uh, start just manually adjusting the topology for this, this section. But I'm still applying that chamfer on the back. I'm using two segments to make sure I've got a nice soft curve. And I'm going to manually adjust this section. The indentations, they sort of they end but they flow directly into the handle. So we've probably got a wooden handle here wrapped in linen and uh, some sort of you know adhesive uh, so it's going to be quite a, a smooth, they, they can polish it off, it's going to be smooth, it's not going to be like cut metal. So I'm, I'm making sure I've got that smooth edge of where the wood would uh, would have been carved out and then sandpapered and smoothed off. Some more topology adjustments. You'll also note I'm checking my mesh from lots and lots of different angles to make sure that it's uh, I'm not I'm not relying on one view too much. If you just work in the left view or the right view or the front, it you can really get a distorted image of what your model looks like, and then you come put it in perspective, 
and it just looks it looks hideous. So don't be scared to change your view all the time. And the same applies to when working in ZBrush. You you can be it can be very addictive to just stay in one view of your model because it looks good from that angle, and as soon as you change it, it does look bad. But that's that's the point. You you need to keep looking at it from all different angles to make sure that, that your model is looking accurate and realistic. Also, make sure that the images that you're using uh, don't have too much perspective distortion. Some of the references for this knife, they were incred incredible perspective distortion because people took them with regular camera lenses and they took up close uh, shots down the blade and it gives a very distorted image of how large the, the blade is, the, the dimensions. So if, if you can, try and get a very orthographic looking side view and a few measurements from the company's websites to, to make sure that you've got a bit more accuracy. I'm sinking in these uh, extrusion holes for where the screws are going to be. I'm fixing a few little topology uh, issues I had here when I put in an edge loop. And now just uh, balancing everything on the back of the handle, making sure it's all nice and smooth, and the sur you know the surface is is nice and curved, without any jagged or rough edges or anything breaking the surface curvature. We're checking with Turbo Smooth on, he's in show end result. I've worked out that I can just delete that whole edge loop and get a, a smoother result with less control points, which is always good. So now I've selected the polys for the screw holes and shift drag them over using element, uh, keep the element, and I'm arranging the vertices around those holes because I'm going to go and uh, do an insert and delete the face, and then I'm going to connect everything up. I'm rotating them just to fit into those hole spaces and connecting everything up. And now it doesn't matter if they're rotated because they're cylindrical anyway, so when they're smooth they're going to look great. Um, my model just got a standard shader on it with a little bit of specularity. You don't want it to be too high because you can't see the changes in the surface of your model, but you don't want it to be too low because you need that specularity to see your surface properly. So I've got it on something like 50 and 30. I'm modeling the little hole at the back where the, the rope goes in and you hang it on your belt. I've, I've also, I've, before, before I extruded that inwards, I duplicated that uh, poly off and then I extruded it inwards. And the duplicated section uh, I kept as an element and now I'm just giving it a gold material to so I know I know what it is. And I've made some modeling adjustments, I've extruded inwards, add a couple of edge loops to uh, smooth it correctly. And I've extruded all the way inwards and the bottom edges I've set to zero on the x-axis, so when I've got the symmetry modifier on, it runs all the way through. I'm making a few more changes to get that nice soft rim that it's got, because this is an inset piece of metal that uh, it's quite soft, quite soft when it joins the handle. Now I've drawn a cylinder out in the left view and moved it out into the uh, entrance of this, this hole. Adding the symmetry modifier and resetting the axis of the, uh, the, the mirror to be at zero so I can work with both sides. And now I'm just doing standard modeling on the screw top. At, you'll note there something really interesting which I, which I found for doing rivets was to just make your, your cylinder double the sides that you would need for the, the side count of the rivet, uh, sorry, the Allen key hole which in this case was a 6, so I'd make a 12-sided cylinder, and then on I'd inset the top face, select every other edge, sorry, every other vertice, and then rotate them all in using constraint to edge. So then they'll go all the way up against the next uh, vertice, vertice, and when they're smooth, you'll have an inner section that's hard, which looks like the Allen key, and then on the outer section, you'll have a smooth-looking uh, cylinder. 
added a bunch of edge loops in there, added service smooth using show end result as I described in the last video, and uh, so I can check how how it looks like, how it smooths, and making sure the, uh, the screw slot is deep enough for you to to get tool in there. Uh, balancing the uh, edge loops that go around the back of the handle. It's always good to get have a good distribution of polys. So you've got a roughly the same size polys all over your object, or roughly the same distance between each se each section of poly. Uh, then you'll get a nice surface curvature. I'm just fixing a few more little little bits and pieces that uh, arose from where we did the chamfer and the manual topology adjustments. And this is on the inside of the knife now, for where it meets the blade. So here I'm not worrying so much about the topology, how beautiful it is, because it's never going to be seen. It's, it goes right up against the side of the knife, and all it's there to do is to be uh, a very hard edge. But it, I couldn't just delete it, because then you'd notice the difference between that surface and where it meets the, the inner blade. It would be incredibly hard. I'd rather have like a nice soft transition, uh, so there's at least something there. So I'm just making a small inset, which is probably the best way of getting that hard edge, uh, but not not too hard. I've also set my uh, screws, deleted the inner section, and moved those uh, moved those vertices inwards to to give a nice hole for the screw to set in. We're almost done with the model now. We've pretty much completed the high poly modeling. We're just making some small adjustments to to make it read better for the game engine. So I'm, I'm making a little bit fatter uh, sides of the screws and bringing them out a little bit so the normal map catches them uh, with a bit more accuracy and uh, it's not quite as flat. So I think that's the high poly knife finished. It's looking pretty good, pretty accurate to all the references, and the surface is looking really nice and smooth and it's going to look great when we've baked it onto our low poly. So in part three I'm going to go over the low poly uh, modeling which we're going to use a little bit of a mixture of different techniques to arrive at an optimized uh, low poly asset which we can then unwrap and use for baking. So I'll see you in part three.